Hello, this is Z with Small Scale Development, where I'm going to help walk you through uh, step by step by step how we do a construction and development project, and so that you can learn how to do it for yourself. So it's been a while since I've been on here. Sorry about that. Um, this Today, I'm going to be talking about a townhouse project we have going on on Washington, uh, the Washington Townhouse Project. And so right now it is october i can't remember when i last posted but uh it's been a while but in, the, in since then we have uh, spoken we've gotten um, approval from the bank and we've got a construction loan and we have also gotten permits final permits approved so we're just starting uh construction as we speak so what has happened in the meantime uh, i'm going to take you a little bit just so you can see what the project looks or, like it's um, two townhouse buildings. So there's a um, four unit townhouse on one side, a four unit townhouse on the other side. And um, it looks sort of like a single family house from the front, but they the townhouses go from front to back. And usually, usually they're from side to side, but we're doing them front to back. And again, this is um, a, le a little easier than doing a fourplex because we don't have to put in a uh, fire uh, suppression system. It's just a, a two hour firewall. So let's start with uh, bank financing. So what we need to do for bank financing is put together a pro forma. So that's kind of a financial model of what we think the it's gonna cost, what we're gonna get in return, um, how much we need for a bank loan, how much we're gonna put in of equity, um, and we'll go over that, that pro forma. And I guess before you need the pro forma, you, you have to have actually an estimate, um, which I will cost estimate, which I'll go over in a later, um, but that's, that's pretty detailed. So I'll save that for another time, but today we're just going to go for a rough look at the pro forma and what I, what I estimated at first. So let's go over to Excel and I'm going to see shrink the screen down. So first, uh, what you're looking at, um, we're going to have eight townhouse units. Um, I did it, I mean, it's hidden here, but I did it, you know, one per, per unit, um, just so it would be a little bit easier for me to compare to other things I've done. Um, it's two bedroom, actually, we're going to be two, two and a half baths, um, one and a half, two and a half. Um, it's a combination. So it's, well, I'll just leave it like that. Um, so there's, of the eight units, four are two bedroom, two and a half, and four are two bedroom, one and a half bath. Um, square footage are a little different. I'm just going to call it in the middle and um, just leave it, uh, call it $2,000 per rent. It, I could have a little bit more complicated uh, spreadsheet that has breaks it down by unit. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do uh, pretend they're all the same and they'll just average out, you know, maybe one's 1950, one's 2050, something like that. So across eight units, it's $16,000 a month uh, and 192,000 per year of, of gross rent. We're going to assume there's 5% vacancy and there's 20% OPEX, so that's operating expenditure. So that would be um, insurance, taxes, property management, other things like that. Um, I am not putting any capital reserves right now because it is gonna be new construction. So everything that's um, in the short term is that needs to be um, fixed will be part of the construction, uh, construction budget. So, uh, you know, after a couple of years, then you are going to want to start putting away uh, money for capital reserve. So this is kind of what our initial uh, first couple of years will look like. Um, so we have a total, uh, we have total of 25% of, of, um, of our rent is going to be spent out of costs um, for this rent multiplier here. For now, um, so our total net rent um, 
net operating income is going to be 144,000 uh, for the year. Um, now, our loan is going to be based on our our uh, net rent and our total value. I'll come to that um, in a minute. So, I'm going to say that our in, in our total our townhouse value here. Um, I estimated, I can't remember offhand how I estimated, but this is this is what I put in as my original estimate. And our total loan is uh, estimated to be 1.7 million. And so I'm looking at total equity in the project after it's complete of about a million dollars. Um, and the, the so the loan to value is gonna be 62% loan to value. So I'm assuming when, when I started this, I was assuming we're going to have 5% interest rates and it's going to be amortized over 25 years. And that will give uh, a debt service coverage ratio of, of 1.15. So essentially um, the amount of income that's going to come in over and above what the debt service is. So the principal and interest, the amount of money that's going to come in, it's going to be 15% more than what the debt is. So, um, and then it's going to, and it's going to cash flow, uh, $1,565 a, a month and the total annual income will be, uh, cash flow will be 18,000. We're going to be paying, um, in principle, about three thousand dollars every month, um, and um, so our total profit is four thousand five hundred um, per month. Total over the year is fifty four thousand, and total principal payment is thirty five thousand, thirty six thousand over the year. Um, from a depreciation basis, we're gonna I'm gonna assume we depreciated over twenty seven months, um, so depreciation this is the amount that's actually can be depreciated so this is basically the, the hard cost of the building that's not including the land cost and that would depreciate to about um 4800 a month or or mm, uh 58000 per year so our our profit is 54 our depreciation and it's 58. So from our tax liability standpoint, it's going to be negative. So that's that's a bonus. That's benefit beneficial that we'll we'll get eighteen thousand dollars of cash flow, and we won't have to pay taxes on it until we until we uh, until we sell it essentially, or or or, or later uh, when when the debt is paid down and the and the, and the rents are higher. So that was how we how we got how it, you know, kind of a initial, initial look at it. Um, I'm going to come back and let's see. So next I'm going to look a little bit closer at the, at the project in general. So, or the, some, somehow it got some of those numbers. So from the project cost. So I'm assuming the, the lot value is $260,000. So there's, there's two lots here. Um, so each one is um, uh, estimated to be 130,000 combined for 260. Um, and construction cost is uh, 1.5 million, essentially. Uh, that's uh, the, cons the construction cost. So when you combine the construction plus the land, um, we're looking at $1.8 million. So when I look at getting a loan, what banks they all have their different metrics and this changes on over time uh with just depending on the market and, and different banks have different but this is kind of what i sort of look look at um a hundred percent loan to cost so it, it, they'll they'll loan up to a hundred percent of the cost and eighty percent this is the maximum so um, they won't loan more than that they won't loan more than 80 percent of the value so the value came in at i'm estimating um uh, that it was 2.8 2.8 million and so the maximum loan that 
we could get would be 2.3 million for for the project and then there's the debt service coverage ratio minimum so essentially the bank is going to want to see a minimum of debt service coverage ratio this is actually pretty low a lot of times banks will look at 1.2 1.25 depending on the type of project um, but given that it is new construction um, and that so you won't have a lot of expenses given that it's in an appreciating neighborhood given that um, I can condo these out their townhouses so it'd be possible to to sell them individually I'm I'm thinking that we can we can push put it to um, 1.15 so that's kind of where where I'm getting it and so we take all these and I look at what is the minimum number of this value here and that is going to be my maximum loan that I can actually uh, I can actually get from the bank so then it says, okay, well, our total cost is going to be 1.8 million. Total loan is 1.7 million and change. So I'm going to have to bring an additional $53,000 of equity to um, this project. However, right now I only have a lot, I have loans on lots of $150,000, but the, the value here is 260. So I actually have um, $110,000 of equity in the lots. Um, so that, that helps me out that I don't necessarily have to bring this extra equity, um, which means that I have an extra $56,000 excess in the project that I can draw. So within the budget, I have a reserve, um, a, a contingency of $40,000. So in case things go over, I have a contingency of $40,000. I additionally have this extra $56,000 over and above that I can, um, that I can tap into if there's, if there's an issue. Um, additionally, I am charging myself or I'm, uh, I have a, I have a investment company that that owns a land owns a building and then separately have a construction company that does a construction um it, it helps me separate how i look at projects what's making money what's not um just be a little bit more efficient and so i'm charging fifty thousand dollars for the construction fee um and so that's additional cash that that i have um available to that that um, if there's any any special issues that come up. So um, typically I, I would try to keep these amounts separate, but it's just, it's a little bit additional buffer. So now we can come back to the appraisal and see what the appraiser thinks. So we got the appraisal in and they look at it in uh, two different ways. They look at what is the rent comps and what, if it was for sale, what what is the for sale comps? So from a rent standpoint, they're looking at, um, they look at, they looked at some other rents. They're $1,900 for a two bedroom, two and a half bath. This one says 1400, this one says 1150, 1150. I'm assuming the 1150 is probably right. So um, they're right next to each other. So I'm thinking that maybe that was a mistake, but so they're thinking there's, they're, they're, um, total rent is $1,900 per unit. Um, and this was what was rented previously. So, um, we can plug that back in over here so we can get to see. And that, um, changes the loan amount, uh, considerably because our, it's, it's limited by our debt service coverage ratio that just went down because our income, um, went down. And they are saying that the, um, let's see, the estimated value per unit is 364. Um, sorry, this is, and there, there, this is an appraisal for a four unit building. So, um, so 1.458. Uh, value per unit and they're estimating so they're 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 saying that um, 
1.2, it's somewhere between 1.2, 1.254, 1.2, 458, 1.215. So um, they're gonna they're gonna estimate it's worth uh, one point one point two. Let's say let's say one point two. So two point four million overall. So we're gonna we're gonna change this to two four zero zero. Oops. So we come back over here to our loan. Our loan to value maximum is 1.9. That's not our limiting factor. It's still the debt service coverage ratio. Um, that's that's our max loan. Um, and that would mean that we would have to come up with $142,000. Um, now, uh, oh, one other thing is they said that the as is value of the, the subject property is $150,000. So remember that we have two lots. And so we're going to change this to 300,000. And so max loan is 1.695. And, um, we have, um, we have we, we have to add an additional thirty two thousand dollars here for the project if you don't include the, the fee. However, um, so this is what the appraisal said after um, getting the the financing back from the bank. I'm not sure how they calculated. We I think we put one point seven eight million in for the loan, and they put in what what they gave us was. Um, 1.772. So I don't know, I can't remember now how that was calculated, but I'm just going to plug that in here. So we have that as our, as our financing number. And we're looking at a, um, maybe it was, maybe it was 75% loan to value. I'm not sure, but so that's where, that's where we're at. Um, that gives us a, uh, 1.1 debt service coverage ratio. Um, however, as, You'll notice this was, um, let's see when this appraisal was taken. Um, this was July 5th. So in case you haven't been paying attention, looking at interest rates, uh, July 5th, well, uh, rates have gone up considerably. So our current rate is 6.25. We just closed on the construction loan and that is our current rate. So we are actually looking at, uh, if we keep this number here, this rent, then we're looking at a um, a negative cash flow. However, our rents um, we have additional rents and rents rents actually because of the interest rates going up and, and affordability being a problem, rents have actually increased. Um, so I I actually think we're going to be twenty one hundred. Um, is is where we where we'll be. We might be a little bit higher than that um, in a year from now, actually. So um, we'll have to see what happens with interest rates and rents. Um, and this is a long term hold, so um, I have flexibility in that we could we could condo them out if if there's a problem and sell them, and there's considerable amount of equity that way. So if, if it came into a problem, but um, this is this is uh, going to be planning for this to be a long term hold. So um, I, I see this area as one that will continue to appreciate, and um, rents will continue to rise over time. It's a growing city, a growing neighborhood. So um, I think you know holding it for the long term is is going to is going to prove to be um, valuable. So that right there is um how we looked at the uh, how I, how I went about looking at the the financing and the uh, the pro forma um as i mentioned also in the meantime we've gotten permits uh the one thing that was i learned uh maybe we'll do another video on the permits but one thing that i learned uh about 
this was previously I had done two unit townhouses and um, they, I had, I had done them where they were all on one. Well, well, it was on one lot. So these are all four of them will be all on one lot. They're not split. And so uh, when I've done it before where I had two units, they just said, okay, we'll just, just do one permit for both units. Well, uh, this time they said, well, actually, you, so I submitted two permits, one for each building. Well, this time they came around and said, well, you need to actually have one permit for each unit. So I submitted two permits. Then they came back and said, well, we need eight units, eight permits. And so it took me quite a while to, to pull all of it together, do eight permits. Uh, then, of course, when they had a, a change, then I had to come back or when they came back with their, their comments, I had to come back, go to the architect, get those changes made and then submit eight more permits. And then had to go back, uh, when they had their next comments, change it over, submit it eight times again and, and do that multiple times. So it's been quite a while to get these permits done, but, uh, we're finally approved, um, for them. And, uh, just, just hoping that, that, uh, construction goes well and that we, uh, rents and and interest rate stabilized so we can run a successful project and that is it for today so thanks for watching and please reach out if you have questions